What's going on, Prem fam? Uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to recreate a low resolution graphic in Adobe Illustrator. Let's do it. That's what the majority of this tutorial is going to be about is using the pen tool to create objects uh, and then filling those objects, manipulating the layers and things just to recreate art in Adobe Illustrator uh, into a vector graphic. That was a mouthful, but that's what we're going to do. So let's get cracking. Here's our artwork. It's an eagle. It was ripped out of Google, and you can see that it's really low res. It says 450 by 336 pixels. Let's grab it and drag it into Illustrator. And, yep, on an 8.5 by 11 artboard, it's still tiny. I'm gonna, oops, need to scale it up so I got something to work with. I just hold Shift and click the corners and drag it up. It keeps the uh, ratio. Uh, and that's good. You can see it's definitely pixelated when we scale it up to a bigger size. So you could never print this as is. We got some work to do. And let's uh let's get cracking on it. So the first thing I do is lock this layer down, then I create a new layer. I'm gonna rename that layer outline. And to create this outline, we're gonna use the pen tool. That's gonna be the majority of what this tutorial about is about. Is uh select the pen tool. And I'm just gonna zoom way in here and we're just gonna start working our way around the around the perimeter of this. So the pin, I'm going to do my best to explain this as I work my way down it, but at the end of the day, the pin tool just takes practice. Uh, the more time you spend with it, the more efficient you'll be at it. So, you know, you'll get a little frustrated, but just keep working and eventually you'll get it down. So you're going to click and then you can see when you click, you get this red line. It's hooked to this first point. This is the line that we're going to be manipulating. So you come to the next spot on this beak and you click and hold. Left click and hold. When you left click and hold, it creates a situation where you have these handles and these handles allow you to manipulate the line you just laid down. So you see I'm, hold, I'm still holding. Get that line where I want it and I release. This is the first line and you can see that the second line comes off of the point that we just made. Now, this because we already made these handles this point this line has already got a pre-curve on it uh, and I'll show you how how we deal with that later on so I'm gonna click here then because I didn't hold it's a straight line if however I did that if I clicked here and held you see that we would create a handle and we could manipulate the the line that we were just working on on the flip side if I just click and release it finishes that line and we're on we're moving on to the next one to work on the next line and I am gonna do that actually I'm gonna come up to here click hold and I'm gonna drag so that this line is able to create the shape of that brow and then I'm gonna come up here to this point and click and uh, come down to this first point here click and hold and then that pretty much finishes off my first little loop there now, let's just say for the sake of argument, you need to stop what you're doing because you're not happy with this. You want to fix some things. But you see how this line is just hanging on there? There's nothing you can do. Well, if you just hold control and just click off of the object, it'll release it so that you can go back and do some edits here. First thing I want to do is use the direct selection tool because we're using a white fill and it doesn't have a stroke. I want to replace that. I want to make a stroke and have no fill. But that stroke, I'm going to fill it with red, a red spot color, just so I can see where my line is as I'm working on it. Makes sense, right? Uh, and then another thing you can do is use the direct selection tool to manipulate points. Let's say, for instance, you aren't happy with the curve of this. You can click on this point. It'll show you all the handles you have here, and it allows you to just kind of manipulate those. You can come to this point. Maybe you just need to drag this down a little bit and add a little more curve there. I mean, you can, you see how it works. You can just you can make manipulations of it. But I'm much happier with that. Now I'm going to come back to my pen tool and come to the last point where I was. Click and uh, it reconnects your line, and you can continue to work. Now I'm going to drag over here to this next point. Click, hold, and using my handles, I create the curve that I need on that line. Now here's a point where we need to do a 90 degree turn, but it you know because we did the click and drag, it made that last line arch. And it's making this line want to do the curve. All you got to do to fix that 
is once you've made this line, you've clicked it and you're ready to do the next one, just hold alt, click on the last point you created and it'll reset those handles so that you can now do a 90 degree turn. Come to this next edge here, click, hold, create that curve, hold alt, click that point, come on over here. So it's just resetting and resetting. Between using alt and uh, clicking and holding, you, you'll be able to crank through this pretty quickly. Alt, click the point, drag it on down. Now I'm coming here, and this one's going to be a long click, drag, looks pretty good. And I'm going to leave that because it actually creates the curve I need for this point. Click. Now, uh, just because I just did a click there, I don't need to hold alt, and I can come to the next point. Click and hold, drag, and this time I do have to hit Alt. I think it makes sense. And we'll just probably fast forward through the rest of this because this is pretty straightforward. Again, before I start fast forwarding, oh yeah, we'll fast forward it and let me keep talking. You, this all this stuff does, man. It just, it's just there's a learning curve, and if you just keep practicing, you'll get it down pretty quickly. Now we're about to close off this object, and you'll see, I, I know that I can use the, the click and drag to get that line to arch around this corner. So I'm going to come right to this point, click, hold, and then I'm just going to drag it out until I get my line where I want it. Boom. So this object is pretty much good to go. Uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about the stroke and, and why you would have different things. Let's say you have your center aligned stroke. Uh, and you turn the, the point up. It's really thick on the outside and also, yeah, yeah, here we go. This is a prime example of that. The limit is pretty high. You could turn the limit up. A lot of the times if the limit's down lower, first and foremost, when there's a center line stroke, it cuts the tips off like this. And even when you do increase the limit here to like 10 or 19, sometimes it'll send these things off and they'll be shooting a mile high off this way or a mile high off that way. So it's hard to control the points when you, when you uh, center align it. However, if you do an inside alignment, the points are more controllable and they look cleaner a lot of the times. Then you may have some issues with the inside point, but the outside points will be much, much cleaner. Uh, it depends. Each graphic will be a little different. You just make your settings and hope for the, hope for the best. I'm going to turn my limit back down here to, to uh, 10, whatever, until we have those points. I see how this point's a little out of control. I'm not really happy with that, but I am going to turn this stroke down because I was a little too thick I think six is probably about right that's about the right font the stroke weight for this so I'm happy with that the next now that this outline is created uh, I feel pretty good about it it's, it's pretty much ready to go I'm gonna select it I'm gonna go up to object and I'm gonna expand my appearance uh, the reason for this is just so that as we're building on this, we're creating objects without strokes. And it's just, I, to me, I've always found it easier to work with when, when you work with them this way. I don't know. Everybody has their own preference, but this is the way I, I like to do it. So now we're going to continue building the rest of this black in this image. So I'm going to start, I'm actually going to start right here. This one's going to be slightly different because I'm going to do an out. Well, first off, I am going to make the, the mouth here just a stroke. So we'll go here, come to this point, here, bring uh, this to here. Uh, I'm gonna, now I'm going to alt click off of that and I'm going to use my direct selection tool. I'm going to click this object, make it a stroke, uh, and then just up it until I feel like it's pretty close. That feels actually pretty good to me. Again, I'm going to go object, expand, fill and stroke and then I'm going to select all of these and using the pathfinder we're going to make a compound path now this is all one object so I clicked it clicked the pathfinder and made all one object now this next part is probably not going to be easily made with the with just one line we're going to have to do the outside edge and then we'll come back around to the inside edge and complete the entire object so we'll start I'm going to start here go here come around I'm now I'm just I'm going to try to go as quickly as I can, uh, and hopefully you'll kind of catch on to what's going on here. I'm a little bummed and tired of this because I've been having, I was having issues with my screen recording software. So this is like the 20th time that I've done this. So at this point, I just want to get through it. Okay, 
There we go. Now I'm going to take that, uh, make the stroke. Uh, I actually feel pretty good about that. I'm going to select everything, use the pathfinder, and use the unite object. And now this is all one big gigantic object. Last thing I need to do is this nose here. This is just like a, a raindrop. It's pretty straightforward, simple to make. That uh, looks pretty good. And again, I'm going to click everything, and I'm going to go unite. So now this is just one nice, big, gigantic, solid object. Uh, the next thing that we clearly need to deal with is that eyeball. I turn this off. We need to make that eye. Uh, to do that, I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to rename this layer eye. And there's a couple ways you could do this, but I'm just going to turn the outline layer off for now. I'm going to zoom way in, and we're just going to start cranking on this eye. The most obvious thing that needs to be made is these white highlights, the specular highlight, and then this golden eyeball. You can tackle this a bunch of different ways. I'm going to make these highlights first. I hope that this tutorial is worth making because it's been a pain in the ass. Now I'm going to do the specular highlight right here. There we go. And of course, these need to be uh, white, not red. Some of these things, I'm not explaining it as I do it. So you just go back and watch it and see what I clicked, and you should get it. All right. Now we're just going to do the eyeball here. There we go. Now you can see I put that eye in front. Just go over to your layers and you can drag the arrangement of this down. You can also use object arrange and you can bring things to the front or send them to the back. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Illustrator gives you all tools. You just got to know how and where they are. But now we got the eye and the eye is sitting on top of our outline. Our outline is currently red, but I'm just going to select it all and I'm going to select black instead of red. And I'm going to take this red out of our swatch menu because we don't need it. And now we're going to work on this beak fill here, like that. There we go. There we go. Clean that up just a little. Good enough. Now we get to deal with making the beak. Now this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to have this layer under the outline. I'm going to lock these two layers so they don't move. And I'm going to start building my beak. Now you can do a couple different things here. Actually, yeah, you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to do some baseline fills on this. And the neat thing about Illustrator is it has this live this live paint tool, which just makes things so easy now. You select it, you come, where the hell did it go? Live paint bucket. And as long as you want the object to be selected and you just click on an area, whoops, and you just fill that area with whatever color you need. So this one needs to be brown. And I'm going to come over here and we're just going to make this one, the majority of it, uh, yellow and then uh, the under part, I'm going to make a like, like a slightly different color of yellow, I guess. Oops. I will just use it just like that for now. Yeah, the live paint tool just makes it really easy to fill objects. Uh, and then you can expand the whole thing. Your object expand, which is, uh, wow. I'm going to ungroup it first. I'm going to take this path and move it up to this layer. Uh, we'll probably just put the beak and everything on its own layer below here. I don't know what this is. Yeah, yeah. And then this is my outline. So I feel good about this outline. This is one object again. Let's see, we could turn that off and on. This is good. I'm also going to put this layer below here like this. Okay, so we got the outline. We got the base layer. We got the beak layer. I'm going to open my color books. I'm going to open my Pantone solid coated book as well. Uh, just because this gives me a couple of darker options with my yellows. Uh, okay. Uh, the first area that I'm going to tackle is our beak here. Expand this. Uh, and I'm going to use... Trying to find a, a matched gold here let's see I'll run with that one 
And then we're going to use those two colors. And more of a... Yeah, I like that. Okay. Now that that's rolling, what we're going to do is... Uh, gosh darn it. I'm going to turn this one off, and I'm going to create this part first, which is going to be the same color as this, and then we'll do a gradient fill on that part of the beak. Uh, so I'm going to come back over here to my pen tool, and I'm just going to start drawing this out. And it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty obvious that that thing, every, there's a lot of gradients in this. Uh, but for this case, I'm just going to leave that one solid and then I'm going to turn this gold on and we're just going to do a gradient fill, uh, from, uh, about like that. And it's going to go from yellow to white. I think that that's about how it looks. Let me see. Uh, no, the white's more. On the top. Like that I guess ish. See I don't I really don't like that transition color. Yeah, doesn't feel exactly right, but that's more or less how you do it. And because this gradient is filled with spot colors, it'll be pretty straightforward and easy to... You know what, though? The more I think about it, I think I want this and this to be maybe this color. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. That just feels better. So I'm going to get this out of here. Get this out of here. We don't need none of these motherfucking colors. We got this. We got this. I feel good about that. Okay. And then this is... Yeah, so that's how you would do the beak. And the same principle uh, essentially applies to to this part. Uh, they got all these weird things in here, uh, but I'm just going to – I guess I'll do it. This is already 15 minutes long, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna do that. But you can see you use the same t skills with the pens, and you create different layers, and you put them on there. But with this fill, I'm just going to take this fill – and do a little gradient with it. I'm going to do maybe like, uh, we'll go here. I'm going to do, this one will be a dark brown. And maybe another darker color of brown? I don't know. Let's see. It was like a really shitty brown. There we go. And this is going to be that real dark brown. Don't like the way that's. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? there we go that's uh, about the best work I'm gonna do with this one right now just cuz this is crazy uh, and I also want I guess I feel like I want this to have a little bit more punch to it Oh, there we go. Now you can do whatever. You can go through and fill it, but this—that's the general idea of how to recreate a graphic. Uh, this halftones would print out. Um, this this film would be a a gradient with using halftone dots to transparent, 
and then this white fill would be white using half tone dots going this way so everything oops I just did that all stupid so everything will work just fine and this will separate well using Accurip uh, that's pretty much it make sure to save it and uh, what else is there to say guys Uh, that was a pain in the butt. The whole point was just to show you kind of uh, how to use the uh, the pen tool to create objects in Adobe Illustrator. Get this out of the way. So oh, I can't. I should use this audio. Okay, guys, that's pretty much it, man. Uh, the pen tool just requires some some time. You got to spend a little time with it to get the hang of it. Once you get the hang of it, it's really easy in recreating graphics. It's simple as shit. It's just you just you got to learn it. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Anyway, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Make sure to share and all that good stuff just to help me get the thing out there. Talk to you later.